All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the flexible and easy to use letter of credit webinar hosted by myself, Derek Layton, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, uh, Michael Young. Hello. Uh, just a couple quick housekeeping items here, uh, as you can see on the bottom of the slide. Uh, as everyone should be muted uh, during the presentation, uh, if you are not, uh, if you would please mute yourself, just kind of help keep this webinar a little bit cleaner. Uh, and then just in this webinar today, we are going to discuss those public unit deposits uh, that you guys have on the books uh, and how you can use letters of credit to securitize them, allowing you to manage your liquidity ratios and ultimately maximize your yields and income. And then just a little quick slide here uh, about our um, Michael and myself. Uh, I joined the banking industry in 2014 at a local community bank here in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, and then I joined Federal Home Loan Bank in 2018 as a lending analyst. And, and then in January of 2020, I was uh, promoted to lending officer. And then kind of what my role right now is, is just to assist our members in pro the product education uh, and allow as, as well as uh, you know, educating them in our current and prudent funding strategy, strategies that we have been seeing throughout our district. Yeah, and I'm Michael Young. Uh, started my career at a nonprofit and came to the bank in 2012. I've been in several departments from accounting enterprise risk management and then came into lending. I'm accountant by education. You might catch on to that as we go throughout the webinar. Uh, and really I'm, with Derek, we're here just to serve our members and present viable strategies that meet the needs of our members and are customized for their particular situation. All right, kind of every webinar I do, I do just like to start out by a, you know, a slide showing our uh, mission statement, and that is that FHL Bank Topeka makes a difference by providing reliable liquidity and funding uh, to help our me members build strong communities. And as a lending officer and Michael, the senior lending officer on the desk, you know, our goal is to be your trusted financial partner. You know, we are constantly in communication uh, with our membership throughout all four states. Uh, you know, we can provide assistance. Uh, and advice on a wider array of topics, not just letters of credit. Uh, so if you, if you have any questions about letters of credit, uh, MPS, collateral, advances, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you guys. Yeah, and one thing about the letter of credit is it's really kind of a boring topic to discuss because it's so easy and convenient. So it's not something to overthink or, and we'll get into that throughout the webinar. For sure. And uh, kind of just the first uh, slide here throughout the webinar is just kind of talk about what exactly, you know, public unit deposits are. Um, and they are essentially, you know, deposits from municipalities, uh, school districts, state, county treasurers, hospitals, fire departments, uh, your cities, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, and then much like any, any individual customers, you know, they do make deposits at your institutions. Uh, but the big difference here uh, as you can see on that last bullet point slide, is that the uh, FDIC does require uh, public unit deposits to be fully insured above the 250,000 FDIC limit, just in case the unlikely event that an institution were to fail. Uh, they don't want the FDIC doesn't want to negatively impact that municipality. Uh, so to ensure public units are able to recoup their deposits in any event, depositories are required to fully collateralize public unit deposits. And then just on this slide here, kind of just go into the two main forms of collateralization that we see uh, for our PUDs. Uh, that first one, I'm sure some of you might be familiar with, is uh, pledging securities, uh, which you know historically um, throughout the years has probably been the most widely used, uh, you know, form of collateralizing your PUDs. Uh, but then our letters of credit, which is what we offer here at the Federal Home Loan Bank. Uh, you know, beneficiaries are starting to prefer this method uh, over securities uh, just because it is a lot cleaner, um, a lot easier process, and the, you know, that reason right there uh, is why they're becoming a lot more popular. Uh, and then on this next slide. And I'd like to chime in real quick. Uh, one thing I hear throughout speaking with members and even working with some of the auditors, external auditors for our members, is they really prefer the letter of credit that saves up time versus going back and tracking that mark to market on that. So it saves not only internally, but externally. Yeah, 
For sure. And then so uh, it's kind of some of the downfalls or troubles you might have with pledging some securities. Uh, first and foremost, in order to meet the elig eligibility requirements uh, to be pledgeable for your PUDs, securities must be very, very liquid. Uh, this means institutions are typically putting comparatively or low-yielding securities on their books just for pledging purposes. And that means uh, the yields and spreads are potentially being given up, you know, ultimately affecting your bottom line. Uh, second, pledging security encumbers uh, the highly liquid asset, which decreases balance sheet liquidity ratios, uh, we, which again, in this environment, you know, I'm sure a lot, not a lot of our members are too worried about their liquidity ratios since everyone's flush with cash. Uh, but, you know, as we start to churn out of this liquid environment, you know, that is something everyone will want to manage to. Uh, and then, uh, and again, once the security is pledged to collateralize the PUD, it moves off balance sheet is no longer included in those ratios. And then just last, uh, but certainly not least, and Michael kind of touched on it here, um, and it requires a lot of effort by, you know, you guys and the beneficiary uh, to monitor the market values and make sure the amount of the the amount of the deposit is always insured, which often requires signatures to pledge and release from both parties, you know, which I'm sure some of your beneficiaries might, you know, give backlash at if you're having to do that quite a bit. Um, and that's really a big reason why um, beneficiaries are starting to prefer um, letters of credit to pledging securities, uh, just to help, you know, cut down all the monitoring uh, and honestly just makes it a lot cleaner, kind of set it and forget it uh, type of product. And then now, um, essentially, what is a letter of credit? Uh, essentially, a letter of credit allows you and your beneficiary to use a federal home loan bank AAA rating to collateralize your beneficiary's deposit. Our high, our high rating ensures the safety of your beneficiary's deposit and makes our letter of credit so widely accepted. If the institution were to fail, the public unit could instantly uh, draw on their letter of credit and uh, recover uh, their deposit amount. And again, you know, we've never ran across an eligible beneficiary, you know, that says that they don't like a letter of credit. Again, you know, it is widely accepted uh, throughout all four states, which is Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Colorado. That's a good point, because even their auditors are liking the letter of credit, because it's kind of a set it and forget it amount, and that doesn't fluctuate. And now we'll get into why use the letter of credit, aside from what we kind of touched on, it's convenient fast and operationally efficient, which allows your staff or yourself to reallocate that time to either more profitable um, tasks. We also allow letters now we can issue them online, and we'll discuss that later on in this webinar. But you can also forward settle your letters. So say someone's going to be out of the office or you just know the money's coming in and within five days. So for whatever reason, you would like to just submit that letter of credit application early and have it settled in the future. You certainly can do that. And that can be canceled prior to settlement. Uh, the other benefits are the no more monitoring mark to market values, or if you forget about that forgotten call that security that we've seen a lot lately, instead of scrambling to find put on a low yielding security, when one gets called away, you can actually expand and find another alternative that turns a little more pickup for you. Uh, then of course, there's improved liquidity ratios that we touched on, and I don't think that that's necessarily an issue for our general membership right now, but I think it's something examiners might be looking at very closely. And similar to our test your line, how you test your ability to access our funding on the advanced side. I would venture to bet examiners, depending on the examiner, would enjoy having that, hey, look, I can issue this letter of credit and free up all these securities and increase my liquidity ratios. And so issuing one might not be a good idea of ensuring that you have all your forms in place and you know how to do it. And really, once we see someone do it once, they continually use it once they realize the ease. And there's obviously ways to boost the earnings, and we touched on that by putting on higher yielding securities. So you don't have to scramble, and this might be revisioning your investment policy. And depending on how many, uh, if you have a limit on the amount you can purchase for a particular security and a high amount of 
public unit deposits, obviously those pledge and releasing fees add up along with the co operational costs and efficiencies that come along with monitoring those and pledging and releasing. And so we've talked a lot about improving liquidity and earnings by using the letter credit instead of pledging securities, but now let's take a look at a tool and, that we developed and how it works. So this is our letter of credit utilization strategy tool, and it's highly customizable. So if you would like to see the numbers relevant to your institution, please reach out to your regional account manager or Derek or myself and our contact information at the end of the slide. Uh, we've broken down the analysis into three sections, so let's take a look at each. So the first one just kind of covers your general collateral capacity that you have, and then here we get into liquidity enhancement. Now, in pre-pandemic, this was huge, and our letters of credit usage skyrocketed to free up those securities and allow members to expand the type of securities they were purchasing. So as we go through this, it's not necessarily good. It's not really necessary right now, but for planning purposes, this is a good idea to look at. And it allows you to monetize on loans that couldn't be used as collateral. And so, as we mentioned earlier, the tool was originally designed for that when loan demand was abundant. However, it's useful today because putting on new securities to compare the earnings impact between eligible and ineligible security types. Uh, this does not, this, again, this tool was developed to say, hey, if we take our the capital, say a security got called and we redeploy that to loans, what's the pickup? And we use a letter of credit to secure our PEDs. Now that it's still in play, it's just a little different comparison because now you could compare what could I get on a treasury versus a ineligible security that you couldn't use to collateralize public unit deposits to see if the fee on the letter of credit makes sense. This does not include the expenses associated with pledging and releasing securities to secure PUDs, which is substantial depending on your uh, policy limits. And it also excludes the dividend impact. We recently added the dividend benefit to letters of credit capital requirement. So a letter of credit supported with full class B is reduced by 1.3 basis points, making that fee even lower. We'll roll into that here, the fee. Yeah, one thing I just kind of want to reiterate real quick uh, is that Michael touched on, you know, this, we just obviously kind of had to show you guys the general, uh, you know, images of this, of this tool. Obviously, all of our members are completely different. Uh, so if you would like us to run this tool and actually walk you through it, you know, please reach out to Michael or I uh, or your account manager. Yeah, and like I mentioned, with the planning purposes at the bottom, you can see the impact to your profitability ratios. That could help with uh, any discussions with examiners. So now the cost and flexibility with the letters of credit. Uh, it is 12 and a half basis points for your simple 99% of our letters, uh, which and then there's a minimum of $125 fee. So example would be a $100,000 letter would be $125, $100,000 letter for one year. The fee is charged on the date the letter of credit is issued. So that's also beneficial, especially around year end. Uh, however, you may elect to have the fee charged quarterly if the Letters issued for amount equal to or greater to than five million. And then if you decide, say, because obviously we we're aware that public unit deposits, they're going to fluctuate, right? They just don't fluctuate as much as normal. But you know when those are going to move, so you have an idea. But say you have an unexpected withdrawal of some deposits, well, we can cancel that letter at any time and we'll refund you the prorated portion of the unused letter of credit. With a set, and that's still subject to the minimum $125 fee processing. Again, allows you to, you can forward settle. If you forward settle on a letter of credit and decide to cancel it before it's settled, no fees charged. All right, now we're just going to kind of move on to some of the uh, required, required tools that are needed to issue letters of credit. Uh, and that first one is the letter of credit agreement. 
uh, form that is going to be very similar to your guys' credit authorization or credit resolution. Uh, you sign that one time, send it in, you guys are good to go. Uh, you know, until you need to change, you know, add or remove someone and you just sign that again. Um, then you have the standby irrevocable letter of credit application. Uh, that is what you would send in um, each time you do issue a letter, so that would, you do have to fill that out each time. Uh, and then one, the second bullet point here, uh, just kind of talks about our members only login, um, where that's kind of your your home base uh, for all of your, uh, where you can view all your letters, uh, you get your fee tickets on there, uh, download an existing um, letters of credit, uh, and then of course, obviously get all the required documents that are needed to issue the letter of credit. Now I'll kind of move on just to the letter of credit system as a whole. Uh, back in October 15th of 2020, uh, we enhanced our members only and letter of credit process so you guys can actually issue letters of credit uh, online now, which is awesome. You know, it's one thing that we're really proud of uh, here on the desk and at the bank and whole. Uh, you know, it just makes it super easy for our members to issue uh, letters of credit. And then, again, when you do issue a letter of credit, you know, you guys, all of your letter of credit contacts uh, at your institution and your beneficiary uh, will receive an encrypted email uh, as soon as the letter of credit is issued. That way, you, know, you and your beneficiary have a copy uh, of that letter of credit. And then this, I kind of just wanted to highlight uh, on these slides how to, you exactly how you would issue a letter of credit online. Uh, and then you just simply log in uh, to members only hover over that letter of credit uh, tab and then go to that application button there that is uh, highlighted. And then this next step, this is that it, you can have letter of credit down in you know, a minute. Um, there's five fields here that you got to fill out. Um, any beneficiary that you guys have already issued a letter of credit for will show up uh, in that drop down box. Uh, select the issue date. Uh, again, you can go out five days, uh, you can pass the day um, you log in. And then expiration date amount, and then if you want multiple or pro, or if you want multiple draws or not, you would you know choose that. You hit submit and you're done. It instantly issues that letter of credit. Uh, then you guys receive the email and so does your beneficiary. Um, and again, so if you guys do issue the letter of credit, you know, two or five days out ahead, um, at nine o'clock that morning you want it to be issued, it'll get issued automatically. And then again, you know, you and your beneficiary. Uh, we'll receive that email so that way you guys have the peace of mind you know, knowing that that letter was issued. Yeah, and to add in, you just change that issue date to whatever date you wanted it settled as long as it's been five days. Um, and another thing, if your beneficiary does not become available in that drop down menu, it's likely because it's the first time you've issued a letter of credit to that beneficiary. So we do need to enter that into the system on our end. So sometimes it's best just to fill out the application and send it to us, or you can just give us a call and or an email with the information, and we can enter that for you. Yep, yeah, that's a great point, Michael. And then on this uh, next slide here, there's kind of our more traditional, uh, you know, we do still have that PDF application uh, for you guys that you can email or fax. I'm thinking today's you know, day and age, email um, is a little bit better than fax, and just another you know, kind of peace of mind thing with the email. Uh, you know, if you email our lending inbox, you know, we will always email you back. That way, you know, we got the letter and we're going to issue it um, for you that same day, as long as it, you know, we get it before 3:30 or somewhere, you know, around 3:30. As to where, you know, faxes, you know, they do get lost. Uh, yeah, and one thing to chime in here again, uh, a couple, I think it was about three years ago, we did a member survey and surveyed all of our members and one of the top three things they wanted was either we used to fax the letter of credit to the and fees back to the member and then we'd have to fax it to the beneficiary and not only was it cumbersome on our end it was just a lot easier so we now get do secured emails so once the letter of credit is issued the beneficiary receives a secured email with that letter of credit instantly and as we moved on we started prioritizing at members request the online ability and since that we have about i think it's nearly 65 percent of our members that use the letter of credit product use the online feature and that number just keeps going up and up every day 
or every week when we look at it. So yep. it is really that easy. And as we go on, you'll see why it's much easier than the PDF application. For sure. And then yeah, I'm sure if uh, you guys have issued a letter of credit, um, you've seen this form. This is just our standard, you know, PDF letter of credit form. All those easy fill tabs, you can tap through that, you know. And again, you still can send them in this way uh, if you prefer. You know, it doesn't matter. It's completely up to you guys. Just want to let you guys know that you do have the option uh, to issue online uh, or fill out this yeah, uh, PDF form. That's a lot more fields than the five earlier. <laughs> so I would suggest the members only. Of course, the first time you issue one to your uh, beneficiary, if it's the first time, then you might need to go ahead and fill this out. And historically, if you do want to take this route, we find it best to save that application so you don't have to key in your institution address, the beneficiary's name, and you can just go in and change the date, uh, issue date, the amount, and maturity date. And then this uh, slide here you know, just shows a lot of the information we have out on our website. Uh, FHLB Topeka.com backslash letters. You know, that is a great uh, you know, tool uh, for you guys that has a whole bunch of videos. Uh, there's a video on there that kind of walks you through um, issuing an online letter of credit if you guys are doing it for the first time. Uh, or you guys can call us uh, if you have questions about that. Uh, and then also, you know, I'm sure you guys get a lot of questions from your beneficiaries as to, you know, how, how they would recoup their money or why uh, using an FHLB letter of credit is important. Uh, your beneficiaries also have a, a video out there available to them um, if they would like to go look at that. And there's also packets available out there and ample information. We've had great feedback from beneficiaries and members on the two videos that are out there, so I highly suggest going out and viewing them. And it's also great material to provide to the, a beneficiary that's only used charities and so used to fudging and releasing, and that's kind of what we here throughout our district is now the beneficiaries are like, we will only deposit our money there if you use a letter of credit. Less cumbersome on our end. Yeah. So it just saves time for everyone. For sure. And that uh, you know, kind of wraps up the uh, webinar uh, this morning. As you can see here on the screen, we do have um, Jeff Steiner, our Kansas Regional Account Manager, and then Rusty Davis, our Colorado and then Western Kansas and Nebraska. Uh, account manager, and then you also have uh, Michael and I's contact info on there. If you guys do have any questions, you know, please feel free uh, to reach out there with anything. And that, so we do have a couple more minutes here. If you guys do have any questions uh, for us right now uh, about the um, letter of credit webinar, just please feel free uh, to go ahead and type those in the Q and A box or the uh, chat box. And you can hear me babble to you all for a little bit. But really, we do mean it. Not no institute, no members the same. So please reach out to us with any questions. We'll walk you through anything. Provide documentation if you'd like to see that tool. Please don't hesitate to reach out to anyone on that screen. And these slides will be available after the webinar. Doesn't look like we have any questions, so we'll let you guys get back to your busy day here a little early. Yeah, but again, thank you everyone for joining. Um, hope you guys learned a little bit here. And you know, just one last time here, any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Have a great day.